video about intermolecular forces. In order to talk about intermolecular forces, it's important to know the difference between an intermolecular force versus an intramolecular force. So let's clarify this point right here. I'm going to start with intramolecular forces. The video is not about intramolecular forces, but let's make sure you know what intra means so you don't confuse it today. Intramolecular forces are basically in the bonds seen here between atoms that are bonded together. So here's a water molecule, and in a water molecule, oxygen is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. These bonds between the atoms are intra, meaning within the molecule. These are very strong bonds. And actually, if you remember back from first semester, which you should, a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, nonmetal, nonmetal, is a covalent bond. That bonding force, again, is an intramolecular. That is not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is intermolecular. So a refresher about what intermolecular means, it's the forces that occur between a molecule. So between this molecule and this molecule right here, there is an attraction. That's what a force is. So if you remember, oxygen end of water and the hydrogen end are attracted. This is the intermolecular between two molecules. Okay? All right. Now, if you remember from our previous videos, when a liquid turns into a gas, those intermolecular forces break and now a water molecule is free to go off as gas. And when a solid melts into a liquid, those intermolecular forces weaken and allow it now to be more into a fluid liquid-like substance. Remember, the misconception is sometimes students think, think that the atoms break apart in phase changes, and that is not true. Okay. All right, so we're focusing on intermolecular forces. Some background knowledge you have to know before we get into those forces is about water. We talked about this in a previous video that water molecules have somewhat positive ends and somewhat negative. So semi or partially positive is what this little squiggly symbol means here. Semi-positive, partially positive, semi-negative, partially negative. Okay? Where does it get these positive and negatives from? Well, if you remember, I have covalent bonding happening. And in covalent bonding, Electrons are being shared. We learned that first semester. Electrons are being shared. So this bond is really made up of electrons being shared and electrons being shared. The thing is, is that if you're a polar molecule, your electrons are not shared evenly. So water is a polar molecule because its electrons aren't shared evenly. Oxygen is hogging the electrons more than the hydrogens because it has the negative sign over here. Now, it's not completely negative because there's still sharing going on. They're still attached. In order to show that oxygen is hogging those electrons, right, we show an arrow pointing in the direction of where the electrons are being hogged with a little plus sign at the bottom showing the positive end. This side of the water molecule is more positively charged. This side is more negatively charged. This is called a dipole moment when we draw this, this arrow in, a dipole moment. Now we know all the charges if we look at the columns on top of our periodic table. Everyone in column one turns into a plus one, plus two, remember that pattern. So that's where I derived these charges from. Oxygen is a negative two. So I knew oxygen would be the hogger of the electrons. Remember, in polar molecules, somebody's hogging the electrons, uneven sharing, okay? All right, so now that we know that, there's also something called nonpolar molecules. Nonpolar basically then mean that you have even sharing. So it's the opposite of polar, something good to know. Okay, let's get into our intermolecular forces. We're gonna be talking about three, these three intermolecular forces today. First one being dipole-dipole attraction. Okay, dipole-dipole attraction is a type of an intermolecular force. And in this intermolecular force, molecules that have dipole moments attract each other. Remember, this is the dipole moment. 
So if you remember back from water, only polar molecules had dipole moments. Okay? So polar molecules with the dipole moments attract each other and they line up their negative and positive ends so they're close to each other. It's kind of represented by this really basic picture here. Here's a molecule with its positive end and its negative. Same thing here. And the positive and negative attract so they line up. This is called a dipole-dipole. Dipole-dipole tend not to be that strong. They're somewhat strong but not the strongest. Okay. Now, there is a type of dipole-dipole that is strong and it specifically has a name, which we're going to learn next. That's called hydrogen bonding. Okay. Before we get to that, here's a great example of another example of a dipole-dipole attraction. If you notice, here's water. Water has a somewhat negative end and a somewhat positive end, and all these molecules have oriented oriented themselves in a direction to be attracted to their positive and negative ends. Right? They line up so their positive and negative ends are close to each other. And that's exactly what water does, is it flips around so its positive hydrogen end is attracted to its somewhat negative um, oxygen end. Okay, Remember, it's not completely positive, not completely negative. It's somewhat positive, somewhat negative. So that's what starts to happen. All right, now, we said there is a specific type of dipole-dipole that's actually very strong and that is called hydrogen bonding. So it's a type of dipole-dipole and it's strong. Hydrogen bonding is when you have hydrogen bonding to either of these three elements, fluorine or hydrogen bonding to oxygen or hydrogen bonding to nitrogen. I think it spells the word fun. Kind of like how my dad would say, wow, this chemistry is a lot of fun. So I always remember it by giving myself an accent and remembering the word fun, okay? So now, why is hydrogen bonding strong? Because hydrogen is a very small atom, very small. So when it bonds to nitrogen, oxygen, or, and fluorine, or fluorine, it's either one of these, not all of them together, it actually can get in really close and make a tight bond. So because hydrogen is small, it gets in close and can make a tight bond. Another reason why hydrogen bonding is a strong type of bond is that there's major hogging going on, okay? Remember, hydrogen bonding is still a dipole-dipole. So we're still talking about polar molecules. And so fluorine, oxygen, ni nitrogen tend to be major hoggers. When hydrogen shares with uh, fluorine, fluorine hogs electrons. When hydrogen is bonded to oxygen, oxygen hogs electrons. And nitrogen also hogs the electrons. So it gets in nice and tight, hogs and pulls in those electrons. Okay. Because hydrogen bonding is strong, it has a lot of physical, um, it has effects on physical properties. For example, boiling points tend to be high. And the reason why is, if we remember about water, in order for water to boil, the molecules have to break apart. Well, if you remember, let's bring back this picture. Water bonded to water is an example of hydrogen bonding. Why? Because hydrogen is bonding with oxygen. Remember, hydrogen bonding with any of these. Here it is, hydrogen bonding with oxygen. So there you go. Here's an example of a hydrogen bond. These are all hydrogen bonding. Okay? These are all very strong. You need a lot of energy put in there, right? If you remember what it takes to actually boil water, 100 degrees Celsius, a lot of energy has to be pumped in there to get that intermolecular force to break. That intermolecular force it has a name now. We know it's hydrogen bond. So water has a very high boiling point because it needs energy and energy and more energy and more energy to break. All right. The last type of intermolecular force we're going to talk about is London Dispersion Forces, abbreviated as LDF, in my opinion. So there are molecules that actually have no dipoles, um, right? Which, which basically, if you remember, we call them nonpolar molecules, okay? Um, and these nonpolar molecules basically don't have positive and negative ends. Okay, so, but we know that they're still attracted to each other, even though they don't have positive and negative parts, right?
Um, for example, noble gases don't have dipole moments, meaning a noble gas doesn't have a positive and negative end to it. But we know noble gases still attract each other at low temperatures because they can form into liquids at low temperatures. So how do they form into liquids? How do they get their intermolecular forces to connect if they don't have positive and negative ends? Kind of like a magnet, right? How come that happens? Well, London dispersion forces are exactly what's happening between these types of molecules. And so we'll explain what happens in a second. But let's make sure we kind of have this down. If you have no dipole, you're considered nonpolar. So London dispersion forces are forces that exist in nonpolar molecules and noble gases. Okay, so how does it work? Well, let's take a look here. Okay, so first of all, in this picture right here, here's an atom right here that has positive, and within the atom there's, and we'll just say it's bonded, and it has negatives, right, positive and negatives. And if you notice, there's not one side that's more positive or more negative than the other. So they don't necessarily attract to each other. In London dispersion forces, these electrons move temporarily to one side, and these electrons move temporarily to one side. So now this negative end gets somewhat formed, and now there's a somewhat positive end on this side. Same thing here. So the electrons move to a side, okay? This movement is very temporary, okay? It's very instant. It just kind of happens, and they're now somewhat fakely attracted to each other. They're temporarily attracted to each other, positive and negative. It's very short-lived, and it's very weak, and that is what exactly a London disperse, dispersion force is. This temporary dipole creation, we temporarily make charged ends. Remember, charged ends are called dipoles. Okay, London dispersion forces are the weakest, and they're seen in nonpolar molecules and noble gases. That's the end of your video.